We need to sober up and realize that God is active to save. And by default, He is also active to judge. And that there are souls perishing. Eating and drinking with the drunken. It means that you're eating the same food, drinking the same food that's intoxicated the world. They are intoxicated now with sports and entertainment. And not one thought of spending an hour alone with Jesus in the Word. There's an intoxication with sports in the United States that is absolutely demonic. There's nothing filthier than soap operas. Nothing. Nudity, filth, adultery, fornication. And I'm going to look you right in the eye and tell you that if you're sitting there when Jesus comes and you're watching that filth, how do you expect to come out of that cesspool suddenly into the arms of Jesus? Come on now. How do you sit there and watch those talk shows that are nothing but slop from the very pits? Absolute filth. And you're going to feed on that? You're going to drink that drink? You're going to eat that food with the drunk and get intoxicated with this? This is life and death. If you think I'm putting on a show, then you're missing the whole point. What are you eating and drinking from that computer? Come on, what are you eating and drinking? And I say this for the young people especially. Ten years ago, I couldn't have preached this. This is where we're headed, folks. And I'm telling you, it's going to... You are going, if you are drinking and eating at the wrong table, if you start eating and drinking with the drunken, you will not make it. I say it again, you will not make it. Because Jesus says, the Bible says clearly evil men are going to wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived. And you and I cannot sit here now. If, if we had the full vision... We would all be on our feet weeping, or on our knees and on our face, if we knew what's coming. To be in love with the appearing is to have a sense of reality. What do I mean by reality? The judgments of God that are here and that are coming upon the earth in mass. And then the eternal judgment of God. Most Christians are not in touch with reality. They're not sober. There's moments and glimpses when we need God, but there's not a sense that the earth is pregnant with the judgments of God, that at the end of the age, the earth will experience the most ravaging judgments of God ever, and then there will be an eternal judgment. We don't think about these things. First of all, you must have in your home a renewed vision of the soon return of Jesus Christ. There has to be a cry in you so that your children hear it. Even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. So the church needs a sense of sobriety. That things are not going to continue on the way they are. And this has to be uppermost in your mind. If, if, if you don't have this truth burning and, and, and alive, a flame in your heart, saying, oh Jesus, I believe that you can come at any moment. I want to be prepared. Oh God, by your Holy Spirit, enable me. Give me power to live for you. Hey, all, all that is in this life, thank God for family, thank God for friends, thank God for his blessings. But there's, this is not the real world. This is not the real world. We're going somewhere for eternity. This is just a little piece of eternity cut out called time and space to repent. A little time and space to, to, to prepare our hearts for the glory of God that awaits us. I'm not living for today. You're going to stand before me. It's appointed unto man once to die after this, the judgment. And folks, we're going to go to the judgment seat of Christ. We're going to stand before him as believers. Some of you are going to be damned. You're not going to be saved. The Lord's going to bind you hand and foot and cast into outer darkness for an eternity. And your hell is going to be so much more terrifying than the heathen. Because the Bible says, to whom much is given, much is expected. Sadly, some of you who can look at Brother Carter, you can look at me, you say, I love my pastors. I love these men. But you're still going to hell. 
you're going to die and go to hell. Because you have never fully yielded. You're still not... You don't even pick this up at home. You're not into it. You never get alone with Him and seek Him. You're not eating and drinking. Christ. You've not become that faithful, wise servant. You still speak doubt. You speak unbelief. If you loved Him, and you believe He's coming, you'll run to Him. The Bible says, absolutely, the law is meant to bring you to such a state of helplessness and terror that you're driven to Christ and His mercy. And preaching like this is, is intended to become a law to you that exposes your laziness exposes everything it's unlike Jesus in you to produce a holy terror that you would say, I will run to His mercy. His mercy is for those only who have already been convicted of their sins and admit I've sinned and, uh, and know that their sins are going to damn them. And once you know that, you run to Jesus and that's when His mercy is given to you. He floods you. That's when the peace, that's when the miracle happens. And that's why there's not much conviction in the church anymore. That's why people are not really turning to the Lord with all their heart because the law of the Lord has not been laid down as a mirror to convict them of their sins. There has to be conviction. And if you're here this morning and you're convicted, there's something turning and twisting in your heart. This wasn't to be cute this morning. This is to tell you if you've been sitting there drinking smut, lay it down. I'm telling you, you're going to go to hell. Folks, this is not a game. It's your eternal soul. And I will not stand before my Maker. I'll not stand before my blessed Jesus. I tell you, I will not. And have anybody's blood on my hands. When I stand there and you are there beside me, to let you know in all love I told you Sunday morning I preached about his coming I talked about that stuff you were drinking it was going to damn you I prayed that you would turn I begged you I pleaded I did everything I used God's hammer I used his law I used his mercy you don't pay me for this say oh brother Dave those, those are old fashioned older techniques from a century ago. No. I don't care what anybody calls it. I'm after your soul. I want you to pray this prayer with me right now. Jesus, I come to you to be cleansed, to be forgiven, and to be changed. I need a new mind. Oh, God. Forgive me for eating and drinking the wrong food and the wrong drink. Give me strength and a desire to feed on Christ and His Word, to pray and to seek the Lord with all my heart. Forgive me, Jesus. I know you're coming soon. I want to be ready. Touch me. Forgive me. Cleanse me and give me this hope. Are you ready to meet him now?